Hi everyone. In this video, we will explore the various types of counters used in PLCs. We will learn what they are, why do we need them, and how to implement them in TwinCat. Counters are function blocks that count up or down until a preset value or limit has reached. When this limit is reached, its Boolean output is set. These are defined in TwinCat's TC2 standard library. Counters are extensively used in PLCs for counting the number of times an event occurs or setting alarms when an event has happened a certain number of times. An event can be anything from counting bottles that have been produced on a production line or counting the number of products for packaging. There are three types of counters defined in the IC 611.31-3 standard. These are up counter, down counter, and the up down counter. Let's look at these three counters in detail and see how they work. The first one is CTU or up counter. It has three inputs CU or count up Boolean input, reset, another Boolean input which resets the counter output word CV to zero, and PV, the counter limit word. The counter limit input is of type word, which is a 16-bit data type. So when declaring a vari variable to link to this input, a 16-bit data type must be used, like int or uint. Since we are only interested in positive integer values for counting, uint is the most appropriate choice. Its output cv shows the current counter value. Once the counter value reaches the counter limit set by the user, the output Q becomes true to indicate that the counter has counted the number of times as set by the user. This counter is useful when you're counting some product and want to trigger an action when a specific quantity has been reached. We will use this counter in an example when we get to the coding section. Next is the CTD or down counter. It also has three inputs, CD or count down Boolean input, load, another Boolean input which loads the start value, and PV is the start uh, value input. When load is true, the output counter variable CV will be initialized with the start value PV. When input CD is true, output CV will be lowered by one each time until it becomes zero, at which point the output Q turns on. So it's counting down from the start uh, value. This counter is useful when, for example, you have a known number of items in a bin, bin which have been, uh, which are being removed one by one. And when the bin is empty, you want to trigger some kind of action or set an alarm. Lastly, we have the up-down counter, CTUD. It has five inputs and three outputs. CU or count up Boolean input, CD or count down Boolean input, reset, which, as the name suggests, resets the output counter value CV to zero, load, which loads the start value defined by PV, and PV is our start value. Since it's an up-down counter, it has two Boolean outputs, QU and QD. QU turns on when the counter limit PV is reached, and QD turns on when the counter has reached zero. CV output uh, shows the current counter value. This counter combines the functionalities of both the up and down counters. We will explore this in more detail in an example next. We will look at two simplified real-world applications to demonstrate the use of counters. Let's look at the first one. Imagine an automatic packing machine for bottles. A sensor is used to count the number of bottles arriving on the conveyor. For this example, assume that one box can pack six bottles. So we need to keep track of the number of bottles and load them into the box. Once the box has been packed, we signal the conveyor to bring in another round of six bottles. Let's see the implementation in TwinCat. So for this example, since we'll be counting the number of bottles coming on the conveyor, we need an up counter. So we will start with um, creating a new global variable list and declaring our uh, variables there. So let's start with that. 
we'll add a global variable list. Uh, for this example, we'll call it uh, CPU, um, since that's the counter we'll be using. First, we need to instantiate uh, the up counter. So we'll call it um, CTU models, since we are counting bottles, type CTU. Uh, we need to declare some inputs. Um, we know there's a sensor, so we need to read the sensor. Uh, we need an input to reset the counter. And we need to keep track of the um, number of bottles. B sensor, we'll call it B reset. And we'll declare an integer value for the number of bottles. And remember, it has to be a 16 bit integer. So we'll call it um, of type uint. Next, we need to declare the outputs. So when this, uh, oh, and we have to declare, uh, initialize this with a value um, on declaration. In our example, we said six bottles. So we'll give it a value of six. Now let's declare our outputs. Um, so when the six bottles have been counted, um, we are ready to box it. So the output Q of the counter can be assigned to box ready. And we need to keep count of the number of bottles that the sensor is picking up. Um, we can store that in an integer value. We'll say I count, also of type U int. Okay, um, our declaration is done. Let's save it. Now on the PU, POUs, let's create a new program. So we'll create a POU program. We'll first do structured text. So let's call it um, CPU underscore ST. Now here, let's call our instance CTU bottles. And the IntelliSense is telling us what all are the IOs for this. So we need CU equal to B sensor. Reset input, which is our B reset. PV which is our I bottles. Now the outputs are Q, which goes into box ready output and the counter value, which goes to I count. And here we can end and like this. Now, since we have created a new POU, we need to call this from main. So we'll go to main and we'll call CTU ST. And this will execute our CTU program. Now, in order to make this more visual, since I don't actually have a sensor connected, we will make use of the visualizations and we will pin this down here. OK, so I will press this button to mimic the bottles coming down the conveyor and our sensor is picking them up. This will be the input to reset the counter. And once the six bottles have been counted, uh, this LED will come on. 
So let's run it and see how it works. Start. OK. So our number of bottles that we defined for PV is 6, and it has been loaded into the counter. And currently, it's showing 0 because no bottles have yet been picked up by the sensor. So let's imagine the sensor picks up one bottle, and it counts the number of bottles, which is coming from here. Two, three, four, five. Now one more bottle, and that should trigger our output. And yes, it does. So in an actual application, um, this output would trigger the robot to come in and pick up the bottles and box them. Once the conveyor is cleared of the six bottles, some process would reset the counter. So we will do that with a push button here, which resets the counter to back to zero. So the number of bottles is now zero. The output is cleared. And now the conveyor would bring in another batch of six bottles. One, two, three, four, five, six. And output comes on. Robert picks it up. And so on. Let's see how this works in ladder logic. So I have already created a program called it CTU underscore LD. And on the first rung, uh, we have put, the, put a box and put our instance uh, that we defined earlier. And it detects that it's a CTU type. And I have put in all our inputs and outputs. So we have our sensor input going to the count up, reset input on the reset, I bottles going to PV, I count going to CV and the Q output is B box ready. So this is very similar to our implementation in the structured text. So in order to run this, let's go to main and call the new program. And let's run. So when I press the sensor, output count increments. Output comes on. Reset. And so on. Thank you. For our second example, consider an automated parking garage with a capacity of 10 cars. Sensors are installed at the entry and exit points, which keep track of cars entering and leaving the garage. A red indicator lamp turns on when the parking is full, and a green lamp turns on when there are parking spots available. Since we have cars entering and leaving the garage, we need an up-down counter to keep track of the number of cars in the garage. Let's see the twin car implication implementation for the system. So in this example, we have to keep track of the number of cars coming in and out of the parking garage. So this looks like a job for the up-down counter, CTUD. Um, so the block diagram is here, uh, just to refresh. Um, as we discussed, we have inputs for the up and down count to keep track of the up, up and down sensors. Uh, there's a Boolean input to reset the output load the output and the value to be loaded by PV. And then they have um, dedicated outputs for when the up, upper limit is reached or counter is reached zero, and then to display the actual count values. So I have declared a new global variable list and instantiated our up-down counter, made GVLs for inputs and outputs. Now, in this case, we really don't need the load input um, because we will not really be loading PV on the output um, since that's used when you're counting down from a start value, uh, which is not the case here. So 
we will not be using the B load input. Now I have created a ladder logic implementation of this counter. It's complaining about B reset, um, which is here. So I just need to build. Build succeeded. So it should be happy now. So as you can see, I have not tied anything to the load. And the QD, which indicates when the counter value is zero. Um, again, we don't really care if the parking lot is empty. We only care that it's full. So no more cars can come in. Uh, down here, I've created some buttons to mimic the sensors uh, for when the car comes in and exits. This one will reset the counter. These two are the lights that were shown in the presentation. Uh, this one is for when the parking is full. And when it's not full, this light stays on to indicate that there is parking spots available. All right, so let's see how this works. Okay, so the current count is zero. Um, so obviously parking is available. And now we have cars coming in. So as cars enter, the number increments. And if cars leave, the number dec decreases. So let's assume we have our garage full with 10 cars. The since the count has reached the PV input, the QU output comes on, which is tied to the red parking full light. And once the car starts exiting, the parking available light comes on. So that is all for this video. I hope this gives you guys some idea of how uh, counters are used in PLCs. And we'll see you in the next one.